We're rolling, bro. Dude. Cheese Whiz did it. Cheese Whiz, cheese is one of the strains that agrees with me, mind, body, and soul. Yes. There's certain strains that I find jarring, like, you know, OG Kush to name one. But for some reason, cheese, whatever, however this is made, my body's like on all levels like, yes, come here, brothers. Let right. us all in. I don't want to be premature. I'm, I'm waiting and seeing how it goes. It's pretty nice so far. Yeah, yeah I think. Digging the cheese. Yeah, Digging that's cheese. a cheese whiz, bro. That's the, that was the strain. Yeah. That was the thing. People always, you were saying, you're like, oh, you were strain head. It's like, dude, yeah. I'm the biggest strain head. I had no idea. There was a lot, there's a lot of uh, stuff I'd see with weed where people are like, I don't give a fuck what it's called. Just give it to me. Mm-hmm. Like, Here you go, brother. But it's like, if you want to know something about his properties, I can tell you. Yeah. Oh. You know? I, I started off as like a, I don't give a fuck what it's called guy. And then I slowly started getting, and then I became a sommelier. Yeah. I became a sommelier. And now cool. it's like it is very nice. I'm a I'm the biggest strain head, strain snob. I have to know what that's it's called. That's such a joyous hobby to me. Oh, yeah, dude, it's, it's like that's like best. one of those things that you can really become just disgustingly autistic about, yes. and there's no downside. Not at yeah. all. I mean, tough. It's tough when you get going about it and someone's not interested. That's that's rough. That's rough territory. But aside from that, it's life pretty- of an autist, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. It's no dude, big deal. I'm interested game in a lot of stuff yeah. people do not give a fuck about. Yeah. I got I got very into the uh, I got very into the fact that you could use weed to do different things to your body, and at the height of what I was like, oh my god, it's like fucking, it's like magic. You just casting different spells on yourself. That's when I met Matt. What were you What yeah. were you trying to do, what dude? Kind of I was just trying to body? just like uh, maximum uh, maximum creativity. Gotcha. I was I was I'm always. Then when I first started smoking weed, that that was my whole because I was like uh, I was also starting comedy at that time. So my thing was like, how do I maximize creativity? That's it. That's all yeah. I cared about. So I was just trying to find the perfect strain gotcha. to do that. Which, dude, Sour Diesel is a good- You sound st- like a CEO, by the way. Yeah, 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 <laughs> dude. I take a very fucking CEO approach to how I to handle weed. High. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. It's, it's this a- is important. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> I got to take this. And Where is my bubbler? <laughs> yeah, dude. How I get high is proof that I have potential. True. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. not everything else in my life and, like, the consequences of my actions. But, dude, yeah. the way that I fucking ma- manage weed, dude, it's like... Efficiency. Yeah, absolute efficiency. It has to have... It, and it has to add to my something. It has to add to something. And if I'm not using it to do that, then I'm, like, wasting my time. What am I doing here? So when you, you smoke weed, you have a very specific activity you're about to engage in, basically. Would you say you're yeah. America's most ambitious smoker? Yeah, I am the Gary V of smoking weed. Oh, you really? <laughs> <laughs> we should get him in a pantsuit and like on like a magazine cover about this. <laughs> <laughs> or a skirt suit, rather. Yeah, Fortune, time to get it Fortune done. 420, yeah. baby. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, I don't know. I, uh, now I just smoke weed because I have to every week. I have to smoke weed now once a week. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. forced. Once I lost my job, I really understood. Yeah, it's just, I'm, no, I'm saying this is, I have to clock in. Like, I have to smoke weed every Thursday. That's what I'm There's saying. times on Thursdays, like, yeah, I go, like, I don't know, I'd rather not today. I yeah. say, well, I, I'm obligated to the people. Dude. Oh, you're saying you don't want to do this anymore? Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, he packs okay. his lunch pail and fucking no, does it. There's, times, there's times where I'm like, I don't feel like smoking weed today. And then I just go, I have to. It's my duty. I'm, I'm duty bound. You're duty bound. Yeah. I, I smoke weed like a fucking samurai now, dude. It's just, I'm like, <laughs> I must. <laughs> I must do this <laughs> to honor your family. Your family. Uh, just just you literally, that's it. it. Yeah, that's that it. has to be the biggest pussy dryer I've ever heard of. It's what? Like, I must go smoke weed with my boys for a podcast, <laughs> babe. <laughs> she respects it. She's always. She's the second always like, you say that in your household, a like a a stiff dry breeze just like blows up her sundress. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nah, chicks love it, dude. Chicks love content creators. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing turns chicks on like content creators. They gotta make like the fucking uh, soap opera. You know what, what is it? Uh, Sh- hospital show. General Hospital. Yeah, there's like General Hospital. There's a, there's another one like Scrubs. That's oh yeah, comedy. Scrubs. That's a comedy. sitcom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sitcom. Yeah. Okay. Are you gonna ER? ER. That's yeah. I'm thinking of ER. <laughs> I got my hospital shows crossed up. But yeah, there should be like one of those of of just content, content creators. creators. Yeah, there should be ER for podcasters. <laughs> <laughs> I think actually, yeah, I think that was Frasier. <laughs> Frasier was like a radio, yeah, it was procedural TV show. Oh yeah, and then he just happened. They would show him at home sometimes. Nice. Did Did Frasier have like a hot sitcom wife? Nah, he was uh, 
he was fucking a bunch of hot chicks. Really? Yeah. Who played Frasier? Who played Frasier? Is that the Kelsey Grammer Matt. show? Kelsey Grammer. That's what sorry. The fuck, dude? For a second, I was picturing George Frazier playing Frazier, and I was trying to imagine the show. And Wait, I was who's like, George Frazier? The uh, Tarzan. Brendan Fraser. Fraser. Oh. Fraser. <laughs> <laughs> and George of the Jungle. <laughs> Dude, this is why I never try to name actors. I don't know any actors. It's a fucking weakness I live with. I don't know. I don't know the names of any actors at all. Dude. I that just would be gay ass. if you did. I just showed my ass. You always like you know this actor. I'm like I have no fucking clue, dude. I know like four That's actors. So funny. Because you're constantly asking if Sid's seen TV shows and he's saying no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Man, I was thinking about this the other day and it was cracking me up. So, you know, we you know talk about like the ruiner of fun is like a dickhead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was just thinking about it as like measuring how much of a dickhead a person is, but by measuring their carbon dick print. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go just, on. Yeah, I was mm-hmm. just like, just thinking about like, like now my carbon dick print is pretty low. Yeah. But there right. was a time in my life when my, you know, I had a pretty high carbon dick print. Yeah. You're you basically know? poisoning the environment. I Yeah, I was. The amount of lives you were ruining at the time or like severely bothering when people like <sighs> coming into the house like, yeah. what the fucker? Like, what's yeah. the matter? It's like, fucking Sydney. Yeah. You're a net negative on the vibe. Yeah, it was. And I was like convinced that it was like. It was green energy, you know, but like I had like lithium batteries just dying in waste fields and shit. <laughs> you thought you thought it was the way. Yeah, I thought it was the way. I thought like, you know, but it was like, but now like. Story like, of humanity, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Story of humanity. Realizing they're doing a net negative on the vibe. Like we got to turn this around. Yeah. Yeah, dude. This is the whole, this is the age of Aquarius is coming soon. <laughs> it is. <laughs> We're like so net negative on the vibe yeah. right now. It's fucking you know, nuts, dude. Be, you know. be aware of the man holding I feel like now. I can't shut up about it. It's insane. No, it's literally it's a genuine problem. Yeah, I think we lost David James. Have you have you are you tracking your carbon dick print right now? Mine, I, I swear to God, mine's at an all time low. Mine was yeah. also I was I was on the Doppler there for a while. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was a formation <laughs> tracking across the Doppler, dude. Like selling kids. Matt burned a hole in the bro zone layer. <laughs> 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 You're a harsher. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was a bit of an El Nino in my day, dude. <laughs> yeah, my my impact on the vibe is I it's, I've never been prouder of it. Yeah. Never been prouder yeah. of it. The more you seek for yourself, the worse the fucking the hits the vibe. Mm-hmm. This is like right now, vibe wise, this is like a going gets tough, tough gets going situation. Oh yeah. <laughs> and the war- dude, the warriors are stepping up, right? Now. Like somebody's yeah. gotta do something about it. Yeah. <laughs> I was also thinking about that too, flow. Like when we're when you're making the equation for like uh genuine spontaneous fun, yeah. Flow has to be part of the equation. True. The ability to create to, to There's got to be facilitate flow. You got to quantify for a certain amount of like I don't know what do you want to do or qu- a certain amount of like I'm down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. True. <laughs> True. Downness. You have to quantify downness. Yeah. You have to do experiments where you like switch pe- the switchy activity and see how down everybody is. Because that's also very chill to be like, yeah, whatever. I'll fucking. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. Mate. <laughs> so there's chill and down. Yeah. There's chill and down. How chill is everybody? How down is everybody? For whatever is like the ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> How down is he? For whatever. For like, whatever. Wow. And he means it. Okay. Yeah, that's the whatever. top of the A lot scale. of people claim to be down for whatever. Yeah. And then it's like, you got it takes like two tries to get them into something. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah A look, lot of braggarts out there. Yeah. Let's look at your montage. Let's see how down yeah. you really let's be are honest. for whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's time yeah. to be honest about how but, down we are. What's, what were the thing you think you were the most down for? <laughs> what do you mean? Like, like, a, like a situation? It's on site with bowling for me. If okay. anyone wants to ever just go bowling, I'm like, instead of whatever we're doing, it sounds like a great idea. Yeah, my montage definitely consists of paintballing. Is there Down. Like, yeah. Definitely a little clip of paintballing. Yeah, the thing, only the thing I, I mean, it's a, it was a terrible thing to do from a, like a perspective of property damage. But the most down I can look back on, my friend, my friend had something like really shitty happen in his family where he figured out like somebody was cheating, like one of his parents were cheating and he identified the cheater. And he's like, do you want to go smash his house? We're in high school. And I was like, yeah, let's go smash this house. And we went and we fucking smashed this dude's house. Dude, I was down. 
He was like, do you want to go break all this guy's windows? I was picturing you guys with giant like wooden mallets just smashing, flattening yeah. his home. We just, we just <laughs> broke, we broke, like, we broke like 50% of the front windows. <laughs> like very quickly and just let, we were, I was, but they, we were sitting in the basement. Usually to find out if someone's down, you have to be in a basement. <laughs> Doing absolutely nothing. Someone runs a horrible scenario and you're like, yeah, why not? <laughs> I'm down. It just, just devastated this dude's property. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the most destructive down I, I was ever. You know, that's a, that's a good that's a good proof of down. I mean, it's a bad it was a bad thing to do. I feel bad at the guy's house. If someone did that to my house, I'd be very upset. Although I feel like insurance probably covered. Yeah, that. but it was there was there was some uh, there was some vengeance involved. There was justice. There was, In my head, there was we were doing justice. the absolute right thing. Yeah, we're like dude, abs- I was like, dude, it'd be an honor to go set Absolutely. the record straight right here. Yeah. yeah, I think the most down I ever was was uh, there was a group effort to grab all of the. Uh, this was like January one year when I was a young lad. There Where did like, David James go? He's in the bathroom. He's shitting. Are you yeah. shitting, David James? Or he's puking. Is he mic'd up in there? <laughs> oh, no. No, go check on him. Check on David James. I probably shouldn't tell this story anyway. Yeah. What happened? Oh, it's something really bad? Yeah, it's, it's something pretty bad. What did you do? It's like a real crime. Now I want to know. Well, there was like a group effort among the kids in the neighborhood to grab uh, like all the, the Christmas trees out of the trash and stack them in this like... Uh, like basement stairwell of a school that used to be a police station and then they lit them on fire down damn yeah and it was pretty crazy it was a pretty serious arson (laughs) (laughs) Mm. see that's the thing all of my arsons were solo so it wasn't like proof of being down it was more like this kid might have a problem (laughs) no you were down that's down as hell (laughs) You were originally down. Yeah, I mean, I was, but you were originally down. Nobody yeah. tapped you and solved you were down. You were just down. Yeah. Just... <laughs> you might yeah, be down zero, dude. dude. I was. <laughs> Put me in, coach. That's how down you are, dude. Dude, I was a firebug. I don't know if I've ever talked to that about this. Oh, you I, set fires? Dude, I used to set. I, 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 so in, <laughs> oh, no. oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was actually going to ask Danny to edit my story out. Wait, you guys, what did you guys do? You just lit some Christmas trees on fire. In a, in a, it was an some abandoned kids, building? Some kids lit yeah, 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 yeah. an unoccupied yeah. school. An abandoned on building, right? At one winter. Night. Oh, oc- it was like a. Like there was a, no one in it. The school was in yeah. business, though. I don't know, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's ultimate down for a young yeah. kid to destroy school. <laughs> Destroying school is like. <laughs> Kids are like the ISIS of school. When I was a kid, if someone blew up the school, I'd be like, yes, it is willed. So it has been willed. I was fully down. If someone blew up my school when I was younger, I would have oh, fully I would have down. funded that operation. Dude, yes. This was uh, this was a crazy neighborhood, though. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've covered this before. This was hell. This yeah. was nuts. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's nothing. Because now it sounds crazy that I've said it out loud. What, dude? No, that, right. that sounds like typical kid shit. For I'm me. suspicious yeah. of dudes that hadn't lit something on fire when they were little <laughs> yeah i'm kind of like what the fuck's your deal yeah it is wild like i mean i told the story about how i burned my house down mm, i don't think so are you sure on yeah. purpose i, mean, I almost no, no, set no, a yeah. fire one time i used to do um i used to take brute deodorant and like rub it in the carpet and make a track and light it on fire real quick and it would go <laughs> across the carpet <laughs> i was doing this in a rented beach house i was making like loop to loops with brute deodorant on the carpet and lighting it and it would go Boom, and it was, but then it only burns for like three seconds and it goes out real quick. But it, dude, it completely crisped the carpet up. Yeah. We're, now we have to put a disclaimer on here. Dude, do not try this at home. No, do not. Oh, no. But yeah, if no, you have, no, no, I thought, no. I thought the sued. I thought the fire just like came and stopped, but it completely melted part of the carpet and made it like crunchy as yeah. hell. So, and that's basically how I got fucked up. Like I found a Zippo lighter behind like the, this big chair. And my sister and her friend were like smoking back there. When they heard me coming downstairs, they bounced. Uh, they ran, they took the cigarettes, but they left the Zippo lighter back there. Jesus. And I found it and I started fucking with it. And I realized. First of all, how pumped were you to find that? Uh, that's like finding God. like a real dude, life at, lightsaber. At that age, like a, a zip, like Zippo lighter was like the shit. All the badass yeah, in cinema had Zippo lighters. Yeah. It was was like, a, it's important. And then, like one dirtball kid in your neighborhood would show up with one and be like, what uncle did you steal that from? You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. dude fucking Before, light it on his jeans. Fucking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Before I ever touched yeah. the zipper lighter, my fantasy was to like put it out by closing it. Oh, You know, like shit. that flip out. Yeah. That was, dude, I couldn't wait to get my That's when I, when I get done daydreaming about butterfly knifing, I'm like, all right, next, zipper flip. And I'm like, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> so I'm in heaven. Wow. I'm absolutely in heaven. Yeah. Find a zipper lighter. And I start fucking with it. The chair that I'm behind I realized if I hold it close to the chair, it just melts a tiny little hole. Like it just like expands a, a hole. 
So I start drawing pictures and shit, dude. I'm just back there. Like for, I for, you know, I wasn't like Picasso. I was like smiley face. Sure, yeah. You know what I mean? Draw a little house. You know, try to put trees. You were like burning man shooting a bow. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Constel- <laughs> constellations. I'm making constellations. You know what I mean? And then um, I'm doing this for so long that the Zippo gets hot. And like I throw it out of my hand. And I made so many holes in this fucking chair that it, when it hit the back of the couch, when it normally would have just like bounced back, it just went inside. Like through like holes that I created, and just the whole chair went up. Oh my god! Yeah, you never talked about this. Yeah, 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 dude. It was like it's it's crazy. I don't talk about it because I feel like this is the moment that I invented parkour. Really? Yeah, because I had to jump from behind the chair, <laughs> but I couldn't clear it, so I had to like kick off the wall, and then like I landed on the chair and like rolled off into a run and ran upstairs. Whoa. You yeah. ran upstairs I'm in a fire? I'm picturing when Roger Rabbit's butt's on fire in the kitchen and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you ran upstairs to get someone to put it yeah, out. Yeah, you know, my mom was asleep. She was pregnant with my brother at oh, the time. Man. And like I knocked on the door and I was like, Mom, the house is on fire. And she was like, Stop fucking lying. So then I went in my room and put the covers over my head <gasps> on the bed. How much did the house caught on fire? Dude, and, and like, so it seemed like, I don't know how much longer, but next thing I know, my mom was like, Taking me up out of bed, putting me on her pregnant shoulders, and running me out of a burning How house. How old were you? I was four. What? Yeah, the whole house burnt down. And so you it, flicked the Zippo at four? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Dude, I was. Did you instantly so... get a tattoo on your arm when you did that? Were <laughs> you wearing a <laughs> denim onesie at the time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was wearing transformer. Nah, four, no, four yeah. is too old for that. Yeah, I was transformer underwear. I was wearing a transformer so you underwear. Like, you flipped the Zippo and you just looked like the Little Wayne, the Carter album. So like, <laughs> <laughs> Please call me baby. Yeah, yeah. Oh my yeah. No, yeah, you were Sydney F baby. Yeah, Sydney F baby. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was pretty, I was a pretty precocious kid, man. I was, I had some Zippo, I had Zippo skills. Though. I'm impressed. That's what Dude, I'm saying. I'm but impressed. keep in mind, like, if, it, it would have happened. You like, because of the way pop culture was, we were all fantasizing about Zippo lighters and what we would do anyway. We were putting in mental reps at four. Gosh, man, listen. I don't know how much. I don't know what the generational gap does for movies. But I swear to God, every badass and every action movie had a fucking zip. There was like For a sure. Zippo scene at some point. For sure. Yeah. I'll say this. Now that you've told your clear superpower, I don't want to brag, but you guys should know, I was on rollerblades at six years old. Damn. I rollerbladed at six years old. One of my <laughs> proudest. All this time. One of my proudest yeah. moments, dude, was I was my old house in Havertown rollerblading at six years old. And one of the older kids was like, damn, that kid's young as hell. And I was just like... <laughs> Yeah, I'm all, but that's, that's like an integral part of my psyche. Dude. That's an integral part of my psyche. It's like that's where like all my confidence comes from. I was six, and an older kid was like, "Holy shit, that kid's young as hell. He's on rollerblades." And I was just like, Yo, "Did whatever. you did you instantly start wearing sunglasses on the back of your head like I <laughs> fear?" <laughs> that's where all my confidence comes from. Holy shit! It's the only reason I don't kill myself right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Impressing an older kid by rollerblading that age, dude. It was I was set, dude, for life. That was dude, the dream. That's the vibe. I'm chasing. I've been chasing that dragon. Ever. There's nothing feels like that. Yeah, it's an older kid. Like, damn, that kid's fucking nasty. And I was like, <laughs> up in front of my street, just fucking like, yeah, is what it is, dude. Yeah, <laughs> is David James dead? Damn. Yeah, I don't know. No, a check on him, dude. Him. He said he was okay. <laughs> What's yeah. he doing? Is he shitting? I don't know. What if we gave him diarrhea with weed? <laughs> 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 so yeah, so I, I think that, he's lying about being okay. I yeah, yeah, sure yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. You always say because you think you can figure it out the first time. Yeah, but no. So yeah, I, that. So my house, my whole entire house burned down, and the house next to it. Find out what he's doing. Yeah, pause. This. Demand an answer. Yeah, what are you doing? Tonight? <laughs> David James. He's too high. Oh no! Well, oh, just lay down. Come sit in the tomb and lay down. Yeah, lay down. Take a nap. Get comfortable, dude. Dude, the, we got the, David James too. We broke him. The tomb. No. We're gonna get in trouble, yeah. dude. <laughs> the tomb is literally built for too high, James. Yeah, dude. David. Take a nap. Pause this. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is. It was bound to happen. True. This was bound to happen. We, we lost. We lost the guest from being. He got too high. <laughs> 
True. It's down to happen. True. I feel bad. Yeah. So we, uh, you know, every time we have a guest on here, we have like a group text that we have with the guest. <laughs> and we weren't aware of it because we were just flying so I hard. I had a feeling. I had an intuitive sense. When, he, when I saw I saw him, like, it was like the thing on signs. I saw him beeline from the tomb to the bathroom, and I caught him out on a peripheral. I'm like, that's yeah, yeah, a man yeah. in distress. Yeah, that, that was. That so was. He silently flo- he floated silently to the bathroom. But I thought it could have been. I thought it was shit distress. Yeah. To be honest with you. I was, I was I hoping. Was I was fingers yeah, crossed, yeah. but I was like, he didn't eat anything. I might have been hoping wild. too hard. I might have been doing that thing where I'm hoping so hard that yeah. I try to make it that. It's like, yeah. Yeah. I know. But it was. Uh, Lots of girls missed their periods. It was the same kind of like work. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. No, I knew he was walking the green mile, dude. I saw him. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So he, he sent us a text to, to let us know before that happened. I'm, I'm assuming. So can we like if, if we can please subtitle this on this? I uh, say so uh, David might be the first person to die from podcasting. <laughs> 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 no one's ever even died from podcasting. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> so here, uh, this is what uh, uh, this is what he says. He says, "I am sweating like crazy. I'm floating. I think I gotta period period. <laughs> okay, very high. <laughs> I gotta." Yeah, period. I got a period. <laughs> <laughs> that, might be, that might have to be a t-shirt. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that a that text. on a text. I think I got a okay, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh man. And then Matt telling him that he's in Valhalla and that he's afraid <laughs> the Mad Max silver stuff in his face. <laughs> I tried to comfort him, dude. I think I was confident. Dude. That was that, the greatest pep talk of all time. Dude, that's ever. the worst because you Never. think you think you do like whenever yeah. you're bugging out on weed, you're like, I've done something wrong. That was halftime at the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I had a clipboard, dude. I'm like, get in there. We need you in there. You're just going through a little bit of anxiety. He killed the right first now. half, dude. He yeah. absolutely murdered in the first half. He's gonna have the big walk. This is yeah. like when the sports game when someone walks off the field and we're all sitting here like what time is they going to get here? And he's going to come in the fourth quarter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He'll be back the fourth quarter. <laughs> Can't do it, coach. Yeah, I tried to, that's what I yeah. wanted to do. When you're bugging out on weed, usually it's, it's I did something wrong. Yeah, David, yeah. can you just communicate through text to us? Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. We might have just made contact. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> I, I genuinely hope he's all right. Yeah, it's like what, one one of the things that I learned when I was like when I get too high is I gotta I can't I, I have to stop trying to physiologically fight it. Mm-hmm. I just have to like yes. let it. You gotta get like, loosey goosey. Yeah, like, yes. let it run its course. Like it's like you'd let go. You have to. There's no other way. Yeah. When you're fighting an interior battle, it's the opposite of an exterior battle. The, the way to win interiorly or inside is to surrender. Let go. Always surrender. It's to surrender. Yeah. You must. That is what we teaches you. It's a long plan. Is it create? Yeah. It can create serious anxiety. You have to learn to be like, nah, dude. This is just my life force, which I'm saying is anxiety, but in reality, this is just my fucking vital life force. Yeah, dude, I fucking have that written down. You have to smoke a you, lot of weed yeah. to get to that point where you're like, no, this Wait, is like, just you my knew vital he was going life to say force. That, actually, dude, I have it's actually what even is anxiety, <laughs> dude? Besides just being excited. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, so. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm high. This is a different idea. What'd you write down? I wrote, the issue is never doing it, but what you think it means to do it. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. David said, tub feels great. So hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hang Wait, in there, dude. Are you writing your own desk calendar to yourself, Sid? Well, no, because it, you know hey, how, What like, are you talking uh, about on your phone? You know how like, people, like, people like, have, a, have an issue with like doing something different to change, yeah. to change what's happening right sure. now? Sure. Like, so the, the reason why I thought it was the same thought, I have a friend- who has an issue letting go, right? Right, and I'm trying to figure out a way to like contextualize it to her because it's like it's fucking up her creativity right now. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out a way to contextualize it to her where she can like rationalize it that it is the necessary thing to do, right? So what I'm trying to start with is like, so letting go isn't the issue; it's what it means to let go to you that yeah. is the issue. So that's where we have to start, you know. So that's. Like you, you're being an idiot. You need to recondition yourself. Exactly. Yeah, you're hysterical. Yeah, let's, let's first find out what the conditioning is before we can recondition it. Yeah. Number one thing. I This love is just the out thing. On. This is just the thing that your brain has to do to actually communicate with a woman. By the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like usually you do this in your brain and then like you print out with your words like what the calculations came to. If a woman has to do it for herself, it's just like. Well, I, True. That's, yeah. Well, that's what wisdom is. 
if you can, if it can, <laughs> if, it can, if, you can if it can work for a woman, it's wisdom. Yeah. If you can use it to explain something to a woman, that's wisdom. Dude, you hit, yeah, True. good point. That's why the Bible rules. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> women respect the Bible. Yeah, they respect the Bible. They're like I get it. Though if you hit them with enough Bible, they're yeah. Gonna go. They didn't even understand the Bible really, but they knew they had like the gist. Oh yeah, <laughs> and they were just like, sounds good. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. They would just show them that and be like, well, fuck. Yeah, <laughs> you would flinch. Yeah. I think they're scared of the physical book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> men men have wisdom. Women have gist them. <laughs> they just get the gist of shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. It got there. I think. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I can yeah. see that being like a you know a guy writing a book called that or something. John Grisham. <laughs> John, John, John Grisham. Yeah. All right. It's um, very, very close to Jism, but you know. David, get back here. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Oh, dude. So I didn't talk to you about smoking my changa. Dude, oh, yeah. Never got to the changa, dude. Do you think now is a respectable time to tell that story with David James wounded? <laughs> Yeah, this will this will definitely put things into perspective. He's gonna become a vessel while you while you describe this, dude. I I was in the bathtub on Changa, dude. <laughs> I got <laughs> fucking wrecked. So I had it the first time. Smoked the Changa. I told you, misfire. I'm just like laying there, like man, this sucks. My body's hot. Fucking this is this is not what I signed up for. Sending David James text. Literally, dude. Yeah. I, but I just sat there, got out of it, and was like to Thomas Bud, like, yeah, I'm, I'm good on this. Like, oh, dude, that sucks. Like, dude, that's not what it's supposed to be. Do it again. And I was like, no, I am not doing that again right now. I, that was unpleasant on every single box I could possibly check. <laughs> that was not fun on every single level. Yeah. And they were like, no, you just, you did it wrong. You got to smoke more. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense because <laughs> yeah. I've used that logic before. And that's got, that's not the way these things work. <laughs> so, so they just kept being like, you don't have to, you don't have to. And I was like, I'm, I'm ahead. I'm like, I'm, I don't, I'm fucking not. And they're like, it's just, damn, we wanted you to get the full experience so bad. <laughs> and then Tom starts going, dude, it's actually good. You got the thing. Because you make Changa. Ch- Changa is not just straight DMT. It's DMT with an MAOI inhibitor. Yeah. So it has, the, that's what like potentiates ayahuasca. I know I did Jordan Peterson. It potentiates ayahuasca. Um, so like that gives you like a weird feeling. Like it's like a noticeable feeling. He's like, dude, you already got that thing in your system. If you just smoke a little more, you'll blast off of the of the stuff that's twice as strong of that stuff that just gave you a very unpleasant experience. Mm. And I'm like sitting there, like fuck this. And I'll, finally, he's loading it up. He's just he's just he's like I'll just load. He loads it up. It's sitting there, and I just, I'm like, I was like, just pass me the bitch, dude. I'm definitely, I'm do, I was You're like down. I was down. I had to be. I like he kept being like, you don't have to do it. And I was like, I was like, I have in my head. I was like, I can't not have this. I can't, I today woke up thinking I was going to have this experience. Yeah, I have to have. I can't go to bed not having it because I was like, I don't know if I don't do this now. That was such a turnoff to it. I was like, you're not going to revisit it. Yeah. I almost did not. You're not going to get in the car to go do it. Yeah, yeah, again. yeah. It, it was you're NFM. Honoring, it was NFM. You're honoring the code of death. It was almost you're NFM. It was almost <laughs> not for me. It was almost <laughs> NFM. <laughs> I was like, I think that's NFM. <laughs> yeah, but then that's definitely a subtraction. I almost the rolled the boulder in front. Like all the avenues are being down. I almost rolled a boulder in front of DMT. Like I'm not down. Not yeah, for yeah, me. yeah. So then I'm sitting there and I just go, "Fuck it, give it to me." I'm like, "I'll do it." And but he, with the the thing with that, I learned from that, with, with the the changa. It was like, everyone says with DMT, you got to do three hits. It's like, just get three hits. That's all you think about. The Changa, the thing is, you got to smoke it till you can't smoke it anymore, which is a fucked up proposition. Yeah. So you have to, you have to continue smoking this you have until, you have to, until you have to reality. Trust, you got to you you throw the fight. Dude, yeah. you got to Indiana Jones out of a collapsing reality, basically. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. fucking You got to you walk dude. onto the bridge. It's, it's, uh, yeah. it, it is. You have to, it's like if you were a water bottle, you're smoking it while somebody's just crushing you down <laughs> flat. Yeah. So like that's what I did the second time. I was like, <laughs> I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna get another misfire. I'm gonna smoke this until I fucking can't. Like till it's just it's done. Yeah. So I hit it one time, blow out, hit it a second time, blow out. And I was holding them this I was like hold them this time. So you, you hold one, you feel like stuff gets kind of crunchy. Second one. The first one I barely noticed. Second one, I'm like, all right, it's kinda crunchy. Third one, I'm like Things are speeding up, and yeah. I was like, I'm not doing another misfire. Got a fourth one, and I was like, and all of a sudden, I was like, <laughs> I'm going in for five. And I yeah. lean up for the fifth one, and it was just like, reality just collapsed, and I f- jumped back onto the couch, and was just like, into the most horrific fucking scene. It was insane, dude. <laughs> I got absolutely just like, oh my God. it was the scariest shit it sent me back to a part of when I did the five gram mushroom thing. Yeah. It's like a very specific part that I think I had just like blocked out of my mind. And I was, it, but it was like that, but just like 
way on steroids and like and and I it wasn't like it was like a, a visualization. I was in like what seemed like a room designed to torture a person. Sounds but like just evil, like evil tune world. But it's by its aesthetics alone. Yeah, like it's in indescri- It was like a like a intertwined like black and white floor pattern with just like this like stretched out kind of like snakish being with like purple and pink shit. It was really weird. It was like I was just being Damn. mocked by whatever this thing was. was Celestial like, prankster, by the way. Yes, by the you've ran you've ran into this guy. Yeah. He's a fucking pretty terrible dude. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, but but also I would say it is tough love. Because the, yeah. the thing that I got fucked on was like I remember a part of the, the five gram mushroom thing where I was like, oh, I'd been taking my day to day reality for granted so hard, dude. It's like I love my day to day reality and I'm squandering it, being a pussy on like different, just different levels. I was being a pussy on, mm. therefore squandering my day to day reality because I got thrown into like an absolutely unbearable aspect of like basically hallucination that like I was like, dude, this is so fucking. Cause it was <laughs> you got spiked. <laughs> I got hit, I got hit with a level. Yeah. I got hit with a level when I did the mushrooms. I got hit with a level of consciousness that was unbearable. Mm. It was torturous. I was like watching everything happen simultaneously, and I was just like, this is too much. I don't like this at all. So, but it was like, yeah, and all you got to do is manage your dumb day-to-day bullshit fucking, you know, 13-bit reality, 16-bit yeah. reality. And I was like, yeah, I could probably be doing a better job of handling that little thing. So then so that was part of the mushroom thing that was like kind of cool, but I like kind of forgot about it. Yeah. The DMT sent me right back into that but with a fucking creature being like, remember what you said about it? And I was like, ah. <laughs> I was like, I'm so sorry. Please send me back to data. And it was like, no. And I was like, ah. I was that, fucking freaking dude. Yeah. That, that has like the energy of like, I felt like I was in a gigantic, like graviton, like gravitron circus tent. And I was being pressed against the wall and spun around while the big dude in the middle was like, basically the like, Mexican DJ. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. The celestial prankster was like doing wheelies on a motorcycle, like not literally. Sure, that yeah, was like yeah. the energy he was putting off and like cracking a whip and being like, "Yeah!" And, oh, my. <laughs> yeah. and it was just like, "Damn, dude!" All right, and I'm just very tiny sitting up here getting spun around it, dude. I I got like directly <laughs> scolded and taunted. On like yeah. on he cut me he took my deepest cut and he was like which I didn't know I had a taunt. A, I have a serious problem with how I handle day to day reality apparently and I was just like yeah. not doing it right, dude. And then. The uh, but then after I was in, I'm in that I'm just like I'm sitting there and they heard me go. Was I when I jumped on the couch? I went, oh no, it's that part from the five grams. And they they both were like, what the fuck? And I just lay there like, <laughs> just fucking like, <laughs> like a dreaming dog, dude. I was just like, <laughs> yeah, and then awesome. and then I remembered they were like, dude, it just it goes like it goes quick. So don't get like it just kind of just passes like all this stuff just is like. <laughs> So then it ended, it like started to end, like I started like that, faded away, and then it were, there were just these like weird beings that pulled like a, a shadow part out of me, and they were like, yeah, dude, that's your, that's your just like thought structure that ends with like weird neurotic freak outs, and they are like, yeah, and they threw it out. They're like, yeah, that's that, get, out, get that out of you, and then and I woke up. Wait, so you ain't bout it no more? I'm bout it as hell. They talked, they took yeah. the part of me out that wasn't bout it. Oh, <laughs> shit. they took out neurotic freakouts, meaning, meaning like just like uh, like overly negative thinking and being like this is gonna be bad. Or like eh. they were like they they I had like a deep profound realization, and then it was like oh yeah, that's kind of like just you know stop Dude, with that. That is that is a crazy perception to realize that people that aren't about it don't lack about itness. They have something in them keeping them from about it. Very possible. Dude. Yeah, dude. This was this thing was more like. Because it was still the aspect of like you like yeah definitely be is you got to go back to handling data. I have to do that. Last time I did like hard trips, it, the, I fuck start thinking about my daily reality, and I'm like, it's such a sacred fucking twenty four hour space, dude. I get so <laughs> tripped up on it. It's like I should be handling this with way more reverence, dude, and respect. I, th- I went to too much Catholic school. I think. I think I got way too many years of Catholic education. That's how Bruno Mars feels about women. Maybe though. you should try. You should try adding more kneeling and genuflecting. To see if that I does might. anything for your like the chemicals for the, in your brain. But for the you think it would it would just it'd amp it up. Mm. Oh, if I start before I enter the space, it's genuflecting. Genufle- I should start genuflecting. Start genuflecting. Honest. Start mm. like kneeling for certain parts of conversations. I mean, dude, it's kind of nice. Sing if a hymn ke- every once in a while. If someone came to my house and genuflected. I'd be like, <laughs> fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Someone took my yeah. house that serious. Yeah, I'd like, get a new shit. welcome mat if some if I called someone genuflecting one time. I'm like, okay, maybe I can <laughs> spruce this up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get some more motherfuckers genuflecting coming into my house, dude. It was an overall, it was an overall very positive experience. Um, yeah. I've been like, good man. It was so tight. Spud was like, I'm so sorry. I thought it'd be. I'm like Spud. 
I was on the flip side of the tap. Spud had a very like nice, pleasant experience. Yeah. Mine was just a spanking, dude. I got an absolute spanking, and it was, but it was like very, very nice. Were well, you gonna say I was on the other dude, side? That's of the what tapestry. a bad trip is. Flip side of the tapestry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what people consider a bad trip when they're like, "Well, that wasn't fun." Yeah, like, but it's yeah, like, dude, but dude, I've walked. Through, I was so blown out of my socks of like, just the. It was just again. It was like the magnitude is what fucks me up. It's the utter magnitude of it that I get. Like, I'm in awe. I'm in like genuine Old Testament awe, where I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> It fucks me up, dude. <laughs> like, I was blinded by glory. <laughs> oh my god! What's the warrior in uh, the bag, the bag, bag of Vito, or whatever? Oh, uh, the, like Prince the hairy Persia. dude. Yeah, what's the guy who's um, with Krishna? Yeah, fuck, I forget his name right now. But I, 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 I know his characteristics. I forget his name. There's a name. He's the warrior who has to go fight all of his cousins, and he's like, be up about it. Yeah, the Lord Krishna gives him his true form, and he goes, "Please, it's too, it's too awesome." And he is gets all Salah. Yeah. Is it Salah something? <laughs> it's not Salah. It's no, uh, no, no. he is the sickest dude ever, by the way. That guy ruled. Yeah. Uh, fuck. Who am I thinking? What's the guy's name? He was the one who picked his cousin. His his brother took the weapons, and he was like, "I'll just chill with you." Yeah. Lord Krishna and Lord Krishna's like, "Good choice," because here comes the secrets of the fucking universe. Dude. Yeah. And he's like, "By the way, you got to kill your fucking cousins. Doesn't even matter, dude." He said, like, because that was the whole problem. They were about to go into battle with his whole family. It was a family full of Hindus, like cousins and all, who had to like fight over the land. Yeah, that's no. What they, that's what the Gita is about. Huh? Balarama? It's not Balarama. Is no. It, uh, no, who's, the, who's nah. the protagonist of the of the Bhagavad Gita? What the fuck's the guy's name? Yeah. I'll know it when I hear it. But yeah, it's yeah. a pretty sick book. This dude's about to do battle with his cousins, and then the fucking, the Lord comes down. He's like, what you up to? And he's like, I don't want to fucking cut my cousin's heads off. He's like, dude, you must, dude. <laughs> He's like, just live your life, bro. He's like, if you gotta cut your heads, you gotta cut your cousin's heads off. You guys are all part of the same thing anyway. Just go about your business. Basically. He's like, go about your business, bro. You're a warrior from the war. You're from the Kashrita class. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, that's that was a random aside. But the um, I might have the Gita. I might have to reference. Does he get the Does he get the secrets of the universe? Do you guys mind if I yeah. pause and reference the Gita? <laughs> By all means, can I pause and reference? Yeah, the Gita? yeah, no. I mean, just just reference the Gita. <laughs> Arjuna, Arjuna, Arjuna. <laughs> yes. Oh hell yeah, dude. There's like a spot left, just like an empty spot, always waiting. There's for one you. reserved spot on every public bench for the guy that's ready to just start like sending out one one line from a rap. Oh, that's that's yeah. one of my favorite like types. A nervous of, tick. It's one of my favorite types of dudes. Did you ever see the dudes that walk down the street just fully fucking rapping with headphones mm -hmm. as loud as possible? Yeah. yeah, it's like my favorite. Whenever I see that, I always get pumped. Like, damn, this guy is just having the best time ever. Yeah, I full music they, video. I wonder world. if they're always like if they start at that or if they like walk out their front door, put the disc man in, and then like they just start off like first just bopping their head a little bit, and then two, three tracks deep, it's just like full on like pointing and screaming and shit. It's I feel like it's a certain type of enlightenment all in itself yeah. to be able to go all out to a Walkman in public. <laughs> it's like a certain <laughs> level of where it's like, dude, I think this guy's been like. I think this is his final, his final yeah, wraparound. Yeah, he, he, he was the same. There's an dude. attribute about those people that were not studying. Yeah. Oh yeah. He was like, like in, like historically, he was the same guy that at one point was just like, just had the boombox. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know? And then as as technology evolved, he became. That was like free. the drummer of the friend group, by the way. Like that was like an anchor that like the cool dudes formed around was like a boombox guy. <laughs> true, yeah, go true. far enough back. That was a cornerstone of a squad. Then yeah, I think yeah, like in the sure. '80s, dude, if you're the boombox guy, you had like uh, you had like minions. And then in the 90s, like the minions disappeared and the boombox guy was just like kind of a weirdo in the neighborhood. Dude, that's how breakdancing started. <laughs> what? Minions. Of the boombox like, guy. Yeah, minions of the boombox guy were just like occupying their time. I need to do it. something yeah, cool. Figure, yeah, this yeah, guy's got a boombox. I should do something. We got to level up the vibe. And he started squirming around the ground like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> it was a combination of groveling and dancing. Yeah. That's a nice. That's a nice reaction to breakdancing. Like, it was genuine. Idiots. What are these <laughs> idiots? Yeah, 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 yeah. Get up! Yeah. Get up! You fucking idiots! <laughs> <laughs> I like dancing on your feet. It's more refined. Oh yeah! I want to. Next time I see someone breakdancing, I'm gonna ballroom right next <laughs> to them, just to prove a point. Be like, excuse me. <laughs> Some of us are actually trying to dance here right now. <laughs> Do a foxtrot right in front of them. <laughs> Being a sick ballroom dancer, that's that's a I've never said no to something more times than ballroom dancing lessons to my wife. Every she's like, we should do ballroom dancing. I'm like, no. Bring it up again. No. I might do it actually now. Yeah. Be getting yeah. nasty at the Foxtrot. 
I would make a trade. I would say we could do ballroom dancing, but then we also have to do that one jazz thing where I get to make power bomb you and shit. <laughs> well, to be fair, yeah. we're taking a daggering yeah, class. Daggering, if I have to daggering. take ballroom. Yeah, then we're also <laughs> daggering. <laughs> It would be now that I think about it. I'm like, it would be nasty as fuck to be proficient in ballroom dancing. Yeah, yeah. I, guess, I might, would. I might fire. It would that also back pretty, up. probably be sick as fuck to be a like a world renowned daggering couple. Yeah, but dude, mm. the competition's so thick, dude. That's why rising to the cream of the crop. I'm like, you know, I'm like when you have a kid and they start playing football. It's like, eh, why don't you get them into uh, get them into lacrosse? We'll have a shot at a scholarship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need a ballroom dance, dude. I got to do like the rowing. Of this kind of thing, <laughs> <laughs> make it to the top. It's the rowing of dance. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh, it's so funny. This is low, low ability, high dedication. Oh like, yeah, activity. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It'd be, it must be nice to like become proficient, in, like how to officially stink at dancing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trained in stinking at dancing. <laughs> But I don't know. I, mean, I probably won't do that. I don't know. <laughs> I probably won't do that. <laughs> oh, dude. So I was telling you before, you know, we got sidetracked. Um, yeah, that was it. That was it. I just, I, I came back from the Changa realm. And dude, it's like, I will say, I it was an uninspected, I was, it was, un, it had like an unexpected benefit for me where it like, it completely, sh- you know, it's only been a couple of days, but like, dude, I feel so confident in this, my day to day reality. Mm. I'm like, I got this. I'm like, this is nothing i was on like a, a cosmic torture chamber this little thing i got i was like i don't feel like i can get overwhelmed right now i was kind of like that's i got this hmm. so now I, it feels like i was telling no it feels like someone like opened another fucking like tab like a browser now it's like i have this reality to think about and now i often i have that level i contemplate the fucking dmt reality now where i'm like well there's that too and i'm like yeah you get like a frame of reference I have like a, like a toggle, yeah, like a switch yeah. stream, exactly. It's really weird. I have an expanded universe right now. It's very, it's a weird yeah. side effect. That's whenever like someone's like, I oh, smoke it twenty minutes. You're good twenty minutes later. It's like, yeah, I think I've been changed forever. But other than that, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can like talk and stuff. But yeah, I'm no longer the same person. I feel like, but that's your idea of twenty minutes later, you're fine. Like, okay, thank you. Yeah. Oh, dude, twenty minutes later, you're like, it's like. <laughs> Okay. You're not high anymore. Yeah. I'm a day and a, I'm a day and a half your, out. Your perspective has been shifted to the point where you worry about interacting with people moving forward. No big deal. A little bit. Or, it's, or over. it's not even a worry. It's been like, it's been a boon. It's been an absolute treasure, dude. But I'm like, yeah. it's very funny to walk around being like, just now thinking about stuff that was like, that would potentially spaz me or bug me. And I'm just kind of like, nah, nothing can match the intensity of just being jeered, dude, by that, whatever that entity mm-hmm. was. It was crazy. It was it was sick. It was it was in like a. My brother swears that this is just weird guilt stuff that I have to let go of and transcend. But I was like, I don't know, dude. It was a pretty tight experience. Yeah, he's that, like, you have to break through that and go to the other end. I think it's because I think my experience is pretty negative too. But I think Spud said he had like a pretty genuinely like pleasant. Spud, experience. Spud took like an angel. He deserved ride. it. Yeah, he does. That's no what one, I told. No Spud. one deserved to get blasted off more and land in the arms of an angel. And that's what that's I told Spud. Spud. He was like, oh, yeah. I was hoping you'd have what I had. I was like, Spud, you got what you deserved. Yeah. I got exactly oh, yeah. what I deserved. I'm in store for like 10 more demon sessions, dude. Yes. I've earned every <laughs> single one of them, dude. That's where the carbon, di- the tar- carbon oh, dick boy. print comes oh, back oh, to boy. you. Oh, boy. Yeah. You gotta clean- you're cleansing I'm, your carbon dick print. I'm going to do it again. I yeah. am go- definitely going to do it again. Yeah. And it's like now that I... Spud's chicken fighting with angels. <laughs> and, and we're kind of down in the muck and mire. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Figuring it out. Oh yeah, dude, I mean, I need to start the process of cleansing my carbon dick print, dude. This is one way to get it started. This yeah. whatever the fuck that was. I'm into it's this. fucking yeah. It's, but what wouldn't DMT just be a whole like just one experience of just like finish like getting it in and out in one shot? That's just an idea. It depends, bro. dude. If you okay. grab if you grab okay. a hold of a piece of lasting wisdom, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it again, it's right. whatever you want it to be. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Don't, all these rules we put around it are purely man-made. Because I yeah. would do that and be like, I'm just doing it once and stopping. And it's like, that's just a rule. I'm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I've had multiple DMT, DMTs where I was like, oh, cool. I'm, I'm back at the you know cosmic carnival that's all just for me. And a guy is doing weird shit. Mm-hmm. That's, that's how it feels sometimes. It, I'm telling it's you. Like, okay, cool. Neat. These it's neat tricks. Having people there to help you do it is key. Mm-hmm. Absolute key, dude, to be like, hold it in, keep going, keep going, keep going. Because you want to smoke it till you, your reality completely. The first time I ever fully blasted mm-hmm. off was my wife agreed to help. Like, yeah. I was holding uh, one of like the gla- the vapor genie, mm-hmm. and it gets hot, and you don't want to just like let your hands yeah. go dead and drop it. So she was going to take it from me. So she was telling me to smoke more. Yep, and more. 
And when I finally like couldn't do it anymore and she went by the time she went to take it away, like everything had become like made of like grass and vines and shit like that. And it felt like the a, a fucking forest or a jungle or something was like taking it out of my hands. A jungle made of like peacock feathers. And I was just like, Argh. dude, you know what it felt for me? Mm. That's funny. So you said that makes sense because Noah had a kind of he Noah's I Noah did it. Actually, we'll get into that later. It was very funny actually. So you, he was saying too, like kind of faded into it. I I felt like I got static shocked out of existence. It was went zoom mm. and I was gone. Like I was fully. There was no moment when it was like the room changed. It was just went reality literally crumpled in on itself and i was in a different like universe it wasn't like yeah. a clap it yeah, was like is it I, when i closed my eyes it felt like i got pulled uh out, yeah out of like yeah. on a shelf i felt like i got pulled on it on a drawer in a now, do you th so here, here's so this is my curiosity listening to you guys talk about this so i'm curious to find out first how tightly i'm holding on to my perception of reality <laughs> right Oh, you're talking about like when you smoke it? Yeah, when I smoke it, like because it seems like the the the. the so I mean to laugh smugly, but I was like, you won't hold on to anything, dude. <laughs> well, no, no, you hold on to nothing. No, but it's <laughs> no, no, no. But it seems it seems like the intent, like how much you are tied into that. It, it might be, it's. I mean, like, again, I'm guessing as as a complete novice, nobody who's, who's ever touched yeah, either yeah, DMT sure. or Chenga. It seems like it could be directly proportional, like how much you might be holding on is how harshly you have to be snatched out. Very possible. That makes perfect sense. And also to to answer your question, yeah, I was so I've, I've heard if you smoke like the straight up DMT enough, like you are not even a thing. You're just an awareness. Yeah. I was cognizant enough of like my day to day. My day to day reality was gone, but I still knew of it. I was like, you know what I mean? It still existed. Mm -hmm. So that's a good question, dude. Yeah, that's what um, it, yeah. I got to get my day to day going on. Right first, because that that guilt eats me up alive. Yeah, but like dude, without that stuff, true, true. But I yeah. mean, again, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. But it ever and everyone's different too. Everyone, yeah, yeah, everyone, yeah, like yeah. dude, Noah did it, and Noah was like fifteen, dude, fifteen minutes. He just laid on a couch and just like lived like a very primal type existence. <laughs> he just lived like different primal lifetimes. Oh, that's what's he just up. chilled on a couch. Yeah, he was out for fifty. I was out for five, dude. I got tossed right back out. Noah did 15. Noah was blessed by the ancestors, dude. That's cool. I got absolutely yeah. just the boot. It is kind of like a lap dance where it's like the length is kind of up to them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's no, cool. No, they liked would, you, Noah. Would you say you have a, a low, medium, or high carbon dick print? Pretty low. It's got to be low. Yeah. Oh, for sure, dude. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, but Sid, your question, that's a, that's a solid theory, dude. The more you're kind of holding on and clinging because i knew i was gonna get launched but i didn't know what getting launched was like yeah and mid getting launched i was like what the fuck <laughs> yes. it was way more severe that the launch was way more like dramatic than i thought yeah. but how was how was your first launch like did you feel like you were what the fucking or you feel like you were like it was, yes. it was gradual it was more gradual than that i want to i think i could get deeper i got i gotta get deeper dude it was like i want to be clicked out of existence this was like a giant stepped on reality and squashed yeah. it but i survived and I was just like, what the fuck happened? It was crazy. It was pretty tight. Yeah, I've gotten tumble dried in the universe, but I feel like if I got snapped harder, I could maybe get something more concrete. Yeah. It, it kind of sounds like you know, like a, a Mario party where you can like double jump on somebody's head and flatten them. Yes. I was a Goomba, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I was an absolute Goomba, dude. Goomba. I got stomped. But it was tight. It was definitely tight. Dude. Yeah. Shout out to the OG original Goombarones. True. Whoa. True, yeah. true. Shout out. But yeah, that was cool. That was a cool experience, and I will do that again at some point. Some point. The time yeah, is right. I need to. I need to. I need to. Dude, my brother just smokes it, dude. He was just smoking Changa like casually. And I'm like, dude, you're fucking nuts. Yeah. He just puffs on Changa. He's like, nah, this is chill. And I was like, there's literally. It's pretty chill, dude. It, it makes all the walls like Windows 95 colors. Dude, it tastes so <laughs> bad, dude. Yeah, it's gruesome to inhale. It's a gruesome taste, dude. And I'm like, dude, smoke weed. Yeah. But he likes it. He smokes Changa. But that would be tight. He wants to do a thing where it's like a bunch of people to sit light like a bonfire and just kind of, he calls it sipping changa. You just start sipping the changa, start smoking it, passing it, get yourself in the zone. And then people just blast. You can just blast off, wait to come back, pass it, blast off and just keep. He does it. And he get blasts. Yeah. Dude, he does it. He gets in the auto zone, dude. He, fucking, <laughs> yeah. he, does, he sips on the changa blast for like 10 minutes, then blasts off, comes back. Blasts off again, comes back, sips on the changa, blacks off, and then he's like yeah. done. I'm like, dude, you're fucked up. That's so fun. So having, crazy. having, like, I'm, I'm assuming you haven't had the experience. Could you predict what it might look like visually to take in a fire while blasting off from changa? No clue, dude. My 
my visuals of the outer world were nil. I did all, okay. at one point. I opened my eyes up and like Spud and Tom looked like like scaly fucking weirdo creatures. Like it was, it was I was just kind of like they they looked like them themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, they yeah. were like covered in like weird skin with like like a patterned overlay. I was just I was like, no oh, man, and closed my eyes back again. <laughs> I was like, I'm not back yet. But yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, fun. what about you, Tim? What do you feel like you could? Have you ever seen a fire while blasting off? Uh, when I smoked Jenga around the campfire in my backyard, I ended up holding my face in my hands. And okay. I didn't even look. <laughs> I think real world stuff isn't like the coolest part. No. Yeah. Not, well, yeah. Except for Noah. Noah did the whole time, 12 minutes, eyes open. He didn't realize Whoa, his eyes were He didn't dude. realize that his eyes were open, dude. You might have, you watch out. You could age a thousand years. <laughs> 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 Time yeah, even like a thing. It bro, you just threw time away. No, truly, it was insane. <laughs> it, was ins- it was insane. No, like I, yeah, it was crazy. That's wild. I felt like a consciousness. It was insane. Like not like a like a like a, a physical thing. Yeah, dude. It was crazy. Were we looking at the ceiling the whole time? Yeah. That's cool. What kind of ceiling was it? <laughs> Tom, 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 Tom was. Thomas. Like, it was like Oh wow! Well, he had a clean canvas. He had a white ceiling, dude. My brain right. was so long, and his eyes were open the whole time. And my Tom was afterwards was like, "Dude, I was like two minutes away from picking him up and dropping him on like fourth and south." And he like, "Good <laughs> luck, dude." <laughs> like later, <laughs> he thought he fucking completely fried him. <laughs> he just abandoned him on South Street, and he's like, "He'll be a freak now." <laughs> yeah. Is, is that is that an option for what we have to do with David James? <laughs> yeah. You might get dumped on South Street, dude. Yeah. <laughs> all it does is identify an error in the coding, dude. That's all that's happening. You're yeah. being debugged. You're going, oh wait a second, no. There's a thought loop that I've, I've this is so, dude. That was another thing I bugged out on. I'm like, so you're telling me according to science, all of that shit exists in basically my subconscious. Yeah. So there is a world of shit outside of your awareness that is like trickling in at like the like a gas like an invisible cloud level into your thoughts and you're like oh you know what i'm thinking but there's an invisible thought force that's interacting with your visible like legible yeah, thoughts so that, that so sense. dude that's that that's my fear right because i so badly want to 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 uh be emerged in that part of my brain like i i've i've always believed that that is it's all great men do you want to dwell you want to delve into the subconscious i do and i hero's feel like, journey dude i feel like because of that it will be that will be the thing that is hard for me to attain. Yeah, dude. It's yeah. a terrifying place. You're entering the depths. You're entering your feminine side, dude. You're entering the depths of the feminine part of your you psyche. Know, I'm not afraid of my animus, though. Anima. You That's, what <laughs> That's what I said. That's what I said. You know how black people pluralize everything by <laughs> animus. Yeah. My animusy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm, I'm teasing. But the, yeah, dude, it's, it's your subconscious, your unconscious, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's complete chaos, dude. Yeah. There's your thoughts. There's the tan, like, you know, there's the physical universe, and then there's like the immaterial aspect of the universe, obviously. There's your thoughts. There's like the block strings of words in your head. Yeah. yeah and yeah. there's another force in your mind that's just like the wind you don't see pushing this thought here and there. Yeah. That's the shit you don't know about until you f- fuck around and find out about it. You're like, ah. <laughs> well, see, I was, I was introduced to some of that shit when I, in my coma. True. Like, that was, that's, that's, that's my anchor into my curiosity about all this stuff. Really? Yeah. Because I had some pretty, ridiculous uh information bestowed on me and oh, you had a near-death experience basically yeah yeah, yeah. but it, like an extended one <laughs> you know what i mean it was like i was like in a coma for a while i guess fighting you know what were you doing in there i was just uh you know partaking in the akashic record tight yeah it's pretty sick what it look like it was uh kind of looked like an aurora borealis but you're 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 seeing every you're seeing that imagery but you're also knowing all things at all time throughout Tight. time it's Tight. like yeah it's pretty sick definitely yeah and you can like you know and i was like it was an ex- you can also like pinpoint one moment in time in in any area yeah but also while still seeing everything all at once yeah that's the uh fuck there's a guy robert monroe who always talks about like traveling outside he's a guy who does the monroe institute who like teaches people how to lucid dream and travel outside their body yeah and he's dude i'm reading one of his books dude it's the wildest shit he's just him writing about times he's out of his body <laughs> And yeah. it's the craziest <laughs> shit, dude. It's him. He call, he like has these things. They're like information entities. Like he'll be he'll be dealing with an entity, and it'll be like, "Do you want to know about this?" And he's like, "Yes, very much so." And it just gives him like a big cloud of information that he's like, Ugh, and it hits him. 
He's like, it's too much. And he's like, you'll unpack it over time. Don't worry. Pretty mm. tight. So you got basically, that's what you were yeah. kind of describing. Yeah, yeah, you got yeah. hit with like a, a massive. I was getting little zip drives. Yep. You got hit with a yeah. massive thing of information. Was he ever actually revealing any of the wisdom? Or was he just like, so when I, you know, when I get to figure out what that wisdom was, I'll let you guys know. I think. Another time that this happened? I got it. I think what he, he talks about, like he traveled. He in his like astral body. Went, by, by the way, when I'm lucid dreaming, I have a very cool motorcycle made of lights. I want you to imagine that. Yeah. This guy's just like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> dude. He's written hundreds of pages. Yeah, I'm, I just want to read his book to see what's up. Let him, dude, let him come here on a book tour, dude. I'm gonna be in the audience like, um, yeah. When you say, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, dude. So I, I, one, of, one of the things I remember. Uh, <laughs> what did that enlightenment end up being, by the way? He's like, oh, oh. dude, I'm he's like, in. He, also, <laughs> he would he would be able. His books in detail, where he'd be like, oh, he would answer every single. Thing. This is the level to which he writes. It's so funny. We'll see, yeah. dude. I'm going to battle. You have to. You're the one doing the class project. That's like, wait a second. Then you're like, dude, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up, dude. I didn't do any fucking dude, homework. Shut I need up. this credit. I need oh, I this hate credit that. <laughs> True. Yeah. It, most people say this guy's nuts and out of his mind. Yeah. But no, one, like, one, of, one of the things that I was like, I remember like in, information wise coming from that experience is that uh, like we're obligated to remind children at birth that they're attached to the universe. Like whether or not we, we see that they can process that information, it's important for us to remind. Is that the why they back. smack their butts when they're born? Yeah. <laughs> is that what is that registers you in the universe? Is getting your yeah, yeah, yeah. jump started. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was crazy, man. He, uh, he talks about going. He like he's lucid. He said it just started happening to him. He would have like out of body experiences. He'd be chilling. All of a sudden, he'd be like, "Is he still around? Could he come here?" I'll try. I don't know if he's still alive. I think is he alive, Robert Monroe? He might be dead. Off the top of your head, Danny. His wife died. His wife died when the, the, during the book that I was reading. That was like his last oh, book. Oh no! But he was—he's dead. But you can—we could go to the Monroe Institute. It's in Virginia. We yeah. could fully go down there and be like, "What's up with this?" Yeah. So far, we need to investigate. There's apparently um, Rosicrucian pyramids in Bucks County. Someone told me about. Sick. But nice. you're not allowed around them. Apparently, they're forbidden. We'll see about that. Yeah, it'd be tight. Dude. To, well, dude, if you want beef with Rosicrucians, dude, I don't know if I want that. <laughs> yeah. You want beef with Rosicrucians? No, I'm not gonna beef. Dude, if, we get, if we start going on their fucking this like land, dude, their, I, if we see try, try to see the temples, dude, we get chased, dude. Yeah, by a guy with a briefcase. I don't know. I, I think I might be able to. I think <laughs> I, 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 I want to mention like see you know what if, what about the Oculus Society? True, or maybe that's how you get into the Order of Rosicrucians by yeah. going to the temples and being like, nothing's forbidden to me, and they're like, welcome, brother. Absolutely not. I think maybe. we could figure it out. I feel, like that, I feel like that's kind of the way you got to get into a secret society. I mean, they might abduct you and like fucking make you drink their cum or something, but <laughs> it's fine. As long as we all get it on tape, it'd be great footage. <laughs> how great detailed do you think? How detailed thinking? do you think a fake organization would have to be for you to get someone to drink your cum? Uh, how what? In how detailed would the, like a fake organization need to be? How deep would you need to get someone in before you hit them with? By Satanic the way, church. My cum. Satanic church is a big part of it. Like drinking the master's cum. No way. Yeah, it's like drinking period blood and cum. How There's do you a name a for master? It. People gotta drink your cum. You're the master. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a way. That's like an initiation. You gotta, you, you gotta, I mean, are you not the master if someone drinks your cum? I, I mean, mean, dude, that's, that's is there, hard logic to argue with. Is there any better feeling when someone just slurped your fucking? <laughs> <laughs> it's too much of an upper hand, dude. That's why. That's why. Like, cause you're in your head. You're like, ever like you're dealing with like your babe. You're like, so like seriously, break it down. Why wouldn't you just blow me like? Three times a week, knowing yeah. how awesome it is for me. But they were like, "Yeah, but dude, you don't understand. It's too. Pa- you'll be too powerful." Yeah, You're too- that's the throne, dude. That's what all those ancient. She's protecting you from yourself. She is. You can't if you get too much head. Also, things she's go. She's kind of being a little yeah. bit of a bitch. Oh, sure, <laughs> for sure. But she has to. She loves you. I've always recognized this power, and I've declined. I've, I've, I've never allowed that to be the case with Hansley. What? Never. You can never. No, no, come in your mouth ever. Really? What? Yeah. 22 years. You mean none of yours? <sighs> well, yeah. I mean, because this is like, this is, yeah, this is how we're starting. Dastardly, dude. Yeah, yeah. I'm not worried about, I'm not worried about a past. Because there had to be a point where you were like starting now. Yeah. You I mean, and I mean? it was also like, yeah, it was. You gave her her little wooden sword, dude. <laughs> you yeah. fucking freed her from yeah. the arena. And it's like, my, no. my cum has been swallowed by other people. Oh, okay. Women. I was just you making sure. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, it was like, nah, I'm not. Not allowing this to happen. Damn, you Wait, gave her. So, so it was from from the get. From the never. Gate. Yeah, from give the her gate. gladiators. Whoa, too. yeah. You hold her in too high regard. 
Uh, I don't know. I You're mean, crazy. It, I always yeah. did optional. I always did optional. I, I always said, look, I don't have a weird. You don't have to. I don't care if you spit my cum out. There's no <laughs> yeah. no part of me that wants you to swallow this. <laughs> if you want to, by all means, I'll cheer yeah. you on. But <laughs> <laughs> I won't be offended if you decide that you want to spit this out. You won't offend me whatsoever. Yeah. That's it. It's you know I've always put that on the table. Be like, you know, you can even stop with your hand, which kind of a bummer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's chill though. <laughs> but yeah, yeah no, I'm good there were that. girls who were always kind of like <laughs> like you under they had police tape around their mouth when they came to come. And I always was I always fucking rude that I always be like, oh man, it's a shame. Yeah, this but, is your I mean, opportunity. Yeah, it's a shame you're uh, you know so particular about the whole. No cum in your mouth thing. Yeah. It's pretty awesome from my perspective. <laughs> now I'm trying to enjoy this blowjob, which should be an awesome thing, and I have to worry now. Yeah. When accidentally squirt a little bit of cum in your mouth. Yeah, I didn't. I, think that's I don't know if you know how dicks work. That always happens when they fucking <laughs> always <laughs> accidentally squirt. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, like most. Do you have any sicko mode boys who would be like, yeah, definitely I won't and absolutely would? Yeah. Yeah. All of them. Every yeah. single thing. There's never been the dude who was like, oh, by the way, I'm going to come. Yeah. <laughs> never happened. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, I'm ready now. Yeah, I'm going to be like a three year old who just took a shit. Yeah. Like, I'm ready now. I'm done. <laughs> Sorry, Sid. Yeah. No, that was the dude. That was. Uh... <laughs> David James, 37 yeah. James. Say <laughs> 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 what were you saying? No, I'm just trying to do this. There was this, there was this so I one time got my dick sucked by this chick uh, under a tree in Valley Forge. Oh, <laughs> nice, dude. Valley Forge Park. Damn. And I think I talked about this before, but she was like, she was like the, like I was like texting everybody afterwards because like she hummed on my balls. She you know? what? She like oh, hums on your yeah, balls. She hums, she hums the, but she's she, trying to blow the trumpet, dude. Yeah, she's trying to raise the soldiers. Trying to play taps, yeah, yeah. dude. When she was like, <laughs> like when when I came, like right at that point, you know, like when you would like come in a girl's mouth and you're like working up to be like, oh my bad, my bad, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, for sure. Right, right as I was about to say that, sick of dude, dude. It was already slurped. It was like insane. There was like no transition between me coming and her slurping. She had the vacuum on. Dog, it was wild. Yeah, that's pretty wild. nuts. When they turn the vacuum on, there's a level yeah. of, of slurpage that's almost disturbing. Yeah, because like, yeah, it you're is kind of like is. Yo, because bro. Like, she could like in her mouth. What are the CFMs she on could that fan feel... inside your belly? How you pull so much? <laughs> <in>? <laughs> she could she could feel my dick about to. I could I could feel that she could feel with her mouth that my dick yes, was about yeah, to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It was like wild. And that's another thing. That's another time I'm just paused in awe of just terror of all. Like, God, it's so it's so mess. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not worthy. Well. <laughs> yeah, that no, was pretty wild. Yeah, it's pretty, that's insane. That's like, I mean, just, I mean, it's just a very nice thing when women become the Navy SEALs of head. It's like, it's, what, a it noble, what a noble quest. It is polite. It's a very noble quest. I'm trying to figure out what's the exact, like, life path that puts person on, on that. Like, I'm just going to get the best at head. Yeah, but whatever the, it is. The first, the first time, salute. the first time she, the first time she gave me head, she invited me over specifically for that. It was like, do you want to come over and get your dick sucked? She probably got a compliment, dude. That's if I got a big time compliment on it. It was like, yeah, I'm good at this. Mm-hmm. Found my calling. That's very come down to the dojo energy too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Let, me just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. let me give you a display of my skill. True. A dojo storm there. <laughs> <laughs> you think you could? That'd be funny if you just talked yeah. to like an old kung fu master the whole time. You think you could? Ha ha ha! Yeah. Ha ha ha! Yeah. Um. <laughs> no, there was a there was a there was a there was a chick in college that uh she tried she tried to bring me down to her dojo, but dude she was no master. Really? Yeah, she was no master at all. She was a student. Probably still, but she wasn't willing to. She was a she was a fucking rebellious student. She wasn't willing to take in any information and learn. You By know? the way, Chris Brown has a song called Sensei that's just about this. Are you serious? He acts as a chick <laughs> sensei, just, just tells everything he wants to be done. <laughs> I was like, heard it the other day, started laughing. <laughs> yeah, yes, dude. sensei. Such a it's just such a sick mode to be on with chicks. We're like, I am your sensei. You're, you're such a uh, fucking repository of the most sexual music that exists. <laughs> the R. Kelly shit was crazy. It was. Tony, me and Chris Wood are the only two people who ever listened to that album. Yeah, what the was, the, what was the album right? again? The Buffet. The Buffet. He does he does a 30-second audible slurp. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on the first song. Yeah. Crazy. Did yeah. you know about that, Dubs? The buffet? Dude, R. R. Kelly's Kelly, right album before he got pussy? arrested, yeah, right before he went to jail, he released the most sexually aggressive album ever released. About him just like eating buttholes. It's crazy. <laughs> it's basically J-O-I for women. It is, dude. It, it fully fucking is. Yeah, he, does, he has like a, a like a two-minute spoken word of the very first song, and it's like, it's fucked up. Like, you hear it, and you're like, he definitely peed on that girl. He probably <laughs> he probably knew he was going, like, he knew he was going away, and he's just like, I need to store as much pussy as I can for the winter. True, true. <laughs> so he just put out the beacon. And I, it probably worked. Sure. He dropped an acorn, dude. Yeah. <laughs> God damn, where are we at on this page? Uh, over yeah. This has been David great. James, final word. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay here and order a sandwich while uh, I yeah. get chills. <laughs> yeah, we're, I guess we're done. Yeah, we'll just chill. Yeah. We'll just chill. Yeah. Let's slide into chilling. That might be the ultimate next level Patreon where we don't do anything and just chill. <laughs> <laughs> All right.